Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the physics, but this time in 3D. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create a 3D object, a cube. Now uh, the reason I created this cube is because the first thing on the list of the physics 3Ds, if we go to the physics uh, section, it's a box collider, which a 3D um, cube automatically has. So as you can see, it has this box collider. Now the box collider is real simple. We could adjust so let me turn off the mesh renderer. You can see this green square is the collider. We could click this uh, edit tool and then we could just edit the collider like this and we could adjust it how we want. Or we could just edit it, you know, by changing these values right here. And then we could also change the center of the, the actual collider if we needed to. Now there's also is trigger. Now is trigger um, is just as it implies a trigger so if anything passes through here you could uh, do something through code or through script or it can send a message to to the to the console or you could do many things with it so uh, that's pretty much that uh, there's also this physics material I explained what a physics material is but um, I'm gonna create one real quick later I'll go into more depth about it so as you can see there's a physics material and for this I'm just gonna add uh, bounciness to one I'm going to add zero on the friction. So it's going to have complete bounciness. And then I'm going to add it to this uh, physics cube or physics material. And I'm going to enable the, the mesh renderer. Actually, let me reset this and then add the physics material. And then I'm going to uh, higher up the cube, make it a little higher. And then I'm going to hit play. And now with this physics material, I add bounciness. Oh, well, it's not going to it's not going to fall down because we didn't add no uh, actual gravity. So for gravity, we have to add a rigid body. Now I covered the rigid body 2D in a previous video, but this is in rigid body. And I covered also the box collider 2D in a previous video, but since this is 3D, you know, make sure you use the appropriate um, colliders and rigid bodies for, uh, you know, what you need it for. If you're using, if you're making a 2D game, make sure you use everything 2D. If not, just use these. So with the gravity on and uh, our physics material, you know, set, as you can see, it kind of bounced. So the reason it kind of bounced is because if we go to our physics material, right here, uh, bounce combine, it averages uh, this bounciness between the terrain bounciness. It's something I don't want. So I'm gonna use maximum. So it's gonna use the maximum uh, bounciness, which I think the floor is set to zero and this is set to one. So it's gonna use this since it's a max maximum one. I'm gonna hit play. And it still kind of didn't bounce. Let's see, let's see what what our terrain has. Our terrain, it don't have no physics material. Frictionless, minimum, uh, maximum should work. There you go. Because I had the friction to uh, average, so I set it to minimum. So it'll take this friction, which is none. It'll add the it'll take the less amount of friction which was the cube which was zero or yeah which was zero and that's why it added the bounciness so as you can see if you rotate it it will bounce accordingly and then uh, yeah that's pretty much it for that box collider so let me remove it i might need the rigid body so i'll leave it and then i'm gonna go to physics 2d again i'm gonna go to or actually physics and i'm gonna go to capsule collider now, actually for the capsule collider, what I could do is just delete this cube and add a 3D object, a capsule, and adds this capsule for me. I'll move it over here real quick. And as you can see, we got a capsule collider. Same thing as the box collider. If you hit this edit, you could adjust the, the sizes here, or you could also adjust it here, the radius and the height. And then you could also adjust uh, the center where you want the center to be. But they also have this direction uh, parameter or variable which you could change if you want it to be in the y-axis the x-axis or the z-axis so depending on what you need then of course it has this uh, physical material and you could always use the same physical material for all the objects that uh, you need so if I wanted a uh, hundred bouncy balls I just need one physical material and it would work for all of them but of course Make sure you have a rigid body if they're going to be using uh, gravity. So with the gravity on, with the physics, uh, physics material on, as you can see it bounces. It'll just keep bouncing and bouncing. 
while that's playing. There's also is trigger. <clears throat> Sorry about that. There's is trigger. And this trigger, as I said before, if something passes through this, this collider, it will act as a trigger so you could make something happen. So if I click is trigger, it won't collide with anything at all. So as you can see, it just fell right through. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the capsule collider. Now let's keep going. Now we got character controller. And now for the character controller, as you can see, I erased my capsule collider. So there's no capsule collider here, but we still get this little uh, green object because in the character controller, it, it comes with the caps or yeah, it comes with the capsule collider or a collider. And then, uh, so with this character controller, you could have uh, the limit of the slope. So if you want to move only in a 45 degree angle and that would be the limit, you can't go any higher than that. Uh, there's step offset. So uh, let's say you have uh, stairs, you could change the offset. So the step offset. So uh, I think higher values give you a higher step. Lower values give you a lower step. There's also skin width. So uh, if you want to adjust the, the width of the skin. And I think that adjusts. I think it adjusts. Oh, I don't. That it adjusts the collider. But it don't. Uh, it just says. Yeah it just says. It's just the skin of the character. Then the minimum move uh, direction. So if you wanted to move faster. You would adjust this. But you could also adjust this uh, by a script. So for this to work, I can't just hit play and it, it works. I was seeing that the character controller, so it says right here, the character controller is mainly used for third person or first person, but does not make use of the rigid body physics. So right here it says the skin width is one of the most critical properties to get right when tuning your character controller. If your character gets stuck, it is mostly because your skin width is too small. The skin width will let objects slightly penetrate the controller, but it removes jitter and prevents it from getting stuck. Good practice to keep your skin width uh, at least greater than 0 0.01 and more than 10% of the radius. We recommend keeping uh, minimum move distance at zero, and then uh, you could also use a controller script. So um, later on, I'll show you guys how, you, how to script this character controller so it could actually move. But like I said, if you hit play uh, and you try to move it, it won't work unless you have a script. So I have a I have two projects that have this character controller, and then I'll, that I'm able to move it with the script. But like I said, um, I, I'll I want to show you guys how to do it step by step. That way you guys could understand it. But I, uh, if I go back, that's pretty much it for the character controller. Let me see how much time I have left. Okay, we still got time I think for another one. Let's go back to the physics. And then when you go to, okay, character joint. Character joint is used for, uh, mostly for ragdolls. So let's say, or for characters, it could be for ragdolls as well. But let's say you have an arm. This is, you know, a huge arm and it's connected. You know, it's connected, uh, it's separate, but they're connected. So what we would do is we would add this rigid body and we would pretty much connect them with the rigid bodies. So now they're connected. And then we could, if we wanted to, we could adjust it. So depending on uh, how we want it to actually rotate. And then this is where the articulation body also comes in. If you, you guys don't want to use the rigid body, you could use an articulation body or you could use both. Uh, but I recommend just, you know, using one. And when, let's say we hit play, we're going to see, oh, did I miss the colliders again? Of course I did. So we'll select both of them, we'll add colliders, uh, capsule collider, we'll hit play. When we hit play, as you can see, one bumps into each other, and then as you can see, they're kind of joint together. The reason for that is that only one of them has to have it. So let's say we remove it, and we hit play. Now as you can see, it kind of bends as if it was, let's say, a, a, an elbow. So um, let's say I move this now, it comes with it. Oh, let's see if I could grab it. But yeah, that's pretty much what that does. So what this is good for and um, would be interesting, pretty sure that's, this is how they do this, is you could have, okay, let's say these, all your body parts connected like this for your enemy. So all the body parts connected with the rigid body with the character joint. And you know you just connect them together, and you know 
know, he's standing straight because of uh, the animator that you put. So any animation you put on it, and uh, he's standing straight because of that. And then let's say, let's say we add this brake force and torque. So when every time, let's say he gets shot with a bullet or with whatever, a water gun, whatever you want, it'll just break right off. So just shoot one of his limbs off, let's say. And that's a way you could do that. So if you wanted to have a, a gory game where, you know, you let's say you shoot this part, it would just snap right off and fly right off. Since it has a rigid body, it'll act, it'll have force. So let's say it gets hit on the bottom right here, you know, it will spin accordingly like this. If it gets hit on top, it'll spin like this accordingly with the, you know, with the gravity. Uh, but yeah, um, let me see how much time we got. But yeah, that's, did we finish with this? And then uh, it has all these settings, like the anchor point, the axis, auto config, connected, all these limits. If you want to enable projection, the distance of the projection, the angle of the projection, and, you know, the brake force, if you want to enable collisions, if you want to have, if you want to have all these uh, stuff, if you want to enable pre-processing, I won't go into all of this because there's a lot of detail into it, but um, you could just hover over each little thing, check what it does. You could also, you know, click this little question mark, check the documentation. But most of this is the same thing as any other joint. If you checked out my uh, 2D joint tutorials, um, you can see that the anchor is the same thing. The anchor is pretty much where it starts. The connected anchor is uh, where it ends, uh, swing access. And to do all that, like let's say you, you start messing around with it. And as you can see, this is the little anchor. You could also auto configure and uh, it'll just try to do it automatically. Or if they don't do it, just control Z. And this is just a twist limit. So how much uh, limit it has if you want it to have a spring or like a damper. So a damper, if you go to it, it says if spring is uh, greater than zero, the limit is soft. Uh, this is the dampening of the spring. So it, it's the actual dampening of the spring. So it don't, it's not so springy. Uh, there's the limit, uh, there's bounciness, distance for contact. Uh, same thing with the high twist, low twist. Uh, so the high twist is up here, low twist down here. Uh, swing limit, limit of uh, how far the actual arm can swing. There's bounciness, so if you want it to be able to bounce. So same with the swing limit too. Uh, you could en enable uh, projection. So if you enable projection, uh, you could check the projection distance. So how far it will like uh, fly off or how, how where it's actually moving towards. So which direction it's moving and all that. Then you could check the angle. Uh, you could set the brake force and torque force. So you could uh, set the values. Or if you want it not to be breakable, just keep it at infinity. And then you could enable collisions between each other. You could also have uh, pre-processing. So it says helps destabilizing impossible to fulfill configurations. So it just helps to fulfill that. And then uh, if you want to adjust the scale of the mass, so if let's say he's a strong dude and uh, let's say his upper arm is stronger than his lower arm, you could change it, you know, here and here. This is the connected one. This is the actual mass itself. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, in the next video, I'll show you how to do um, cloth, how to make a cloth sim a simulation like drapes or a hammock shirts anything like that i'm most likely gonna make some drapes or a hammock either one and then uh also there's configurable joints there's constraint um force uh fixed joint hinge joint mesh collider all this stuff i'm gonna cover so uh stay tuned for that hit that subscribe button hit that bell uh notification or icon so you can get notified as soon as they come out and if you enjoyed this video if it helped you out in any way if you liked it Hit that like button, it will really mean a lot to me. Really helps me keep motivated. Same with the subscriptions. Every subscription just motivates me more and more to make more videos like this. So uh, also, I haven't mentioned this in a while. I have a website called uh, robust-games.com. I'll leave uh, a link below. But it's pretty much a website where I kind of keep you updated. I kind of post free assets like uh, sound effects, codes. Uh, 2D assets like images, 
sprites. I tried to do 3D image, uh, 3D models, but I wasn't able to on the website. I couldn't figure it out. So I might start um, either giving it out on itch.io or um, putting it on the access store, maybe selling it. And if you guys, if you guys subscribe, I'll give you guys, uh, you know, free um, assets on Unity. You know, I'll be selling them on the Unity asset store, but of course, uh, I'll give you guys it for free if you guys are subscribed to my website. Just, you know, uh, keep uh, watching these videos to keep updated or, you know, subscribe to the website to keep updated as well. Once again, thank you.